and welcome to the Oddity Archive, your home for sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Now, today is going to be just one of those wonderfully, richly ironic episodes of Archive because on the one hand, we're going to dive headfirst into prude territory, but on the other hand, this could very well be the all-time most profane episode of Archive. Well, save for that one time when that one nut job managed to break in, but uh, I don't like talking about that. Anyway, uh, today we're going to take a look at, as I like to call them, nanny boxes. Here's something that's weird to me, right? Listen, it is not okay to say certain words on TV, but it is perfectly acceptable on TV to show acts of extreme violence. Why? <laughs> Why? Ah, <laughs> vinyl, I tell you that. When I was a kid, to the best of my knowledge, there was only one thing to shield kids from profanity and violence and stuff on TV. They were called parents. I'm pretty sure such things are now extinct. Um, case in point, I don't have any kids, therefore nobody else can. Anyway, these parent things had two primary methods of sheltering their kids from TV nastiness. One was to heavily monitor the kids' viewing habits, and the other was to teach your child where the power button was on the TV, this method being the one I was taught. Sometime between my childhood and the late 90s, the notions of parenting and self-monitoring were rendered obsolete by a handful of new products. These included TV set-top boxes, DVD players with language filters, cable and satellite TV parental locks, and in more recent years, self-advancing DVD players and streaming plugins, all of which we will be looking at to at least some degree today. There you go. Uh -huh. well, Thank you. Click here or go to vidangel.com to start streaming $2 HD movies with filters today. So let's start with the, as of this episode, cutting edge of nanny box technology. So cutting edge, in fact, it's actually a Google Chrome extension as opposed to a physical product. This is called VidAngel, and, as of this episode, is still in beta testing. Now, from what I've read, VidAngel works on about 700 selected Google Play and selected paid YouTube videos by muting offensive language and automatically skipping past any offensive portions as dictated by the viewer. Unfortunately, the VidAngel website offers no user demos, and the only test footage I found of VidAngel in use was so poorly made and with no effort whatsoever made to confirm proper use, I've opted not to excerpt it. Now, needless to say, I can't comment on how effective this thing is, but what I can comment on, however, is their absurd, over-the-top, and, in my opinion, rather misguided ad campaign currently making the rounds on YouTube. Because, you know, words hurt. Apparently physically. So let's blast a stunt family to kingdom come with several thousand paintballs. <sighs> words only hurt if you let them. A paintball to the hand always hurts. Anyway, I personally wanted to try VidAngel out, even signing up for the beta testing, but in the end it was just too cheap to start partaking in their bizarre buy and sell back method of streaming. Read $20 to start by purchasing your first movie, then $18 in return from selling back to VidAngel, assuming you can pull everything off within 24 hours. Would you like to sit down with your family to watch a film and be assured that it wouldn't offend? That it would meet your viewing standards? Take a ClearPlay DVD player home with you today, and you can have that assurance. In early 2004, the likely first attempt at editing out offensive language and visual content was released. This was called ClearPlay. The original ClearPlay technology was actually licensed to, then manufactured and sold by RCA. 
However, facing a patent infringement claim as well as a lawsuit from the Directors Guild of America, RCA dropped their clear play model in mid-2004. But I digress. With the help of a USB port in the front of the player, used in tandem with a provided flash drive, ClearPlay could not only mute profanity, but also automatically skip past any graphic scenes. To keep movie selections up to date, the flash drive could be synced, if you will, through regularly updated files from the company's website. Now, one thing that ClearPlay's DVD players all seem to have in common is that they don't seem particularly reliable and are prone to hardware failure check the web reviews sometime. Anyway, as of this episode, ClearPlay still exists and in recent years has attempted to branch out into streaming video in tandem with Google Play. Did I mention it's $80 a year to keep your ClearPlay up to date? You probably don't even know what you missed. So now I'm going to show you. Let's try that again without clear play. Don't hurt the book! In my view, there is one huge flaw with clear play. IMDb lists over 330,000 feature films, and me thinks that doesn't even begin to cover every film ever made. Like VidAngel, ClearPlay's business model hinges on going back and watching each movie, one at a time, to set edit points and such. In the greater scheme of things, the database for ClearPlay sanitized titles comes up a little short. Only about 3,900 titles as of this episode, and it's taken them 12 years to get that far. In my opinion, the most practical, not to mention accessible, technological method of shielding virgin eyes and ears would have to be the parental controls built into just about every cable and or satellite TV box made since the late 90s. You create a pin number, you filter out things like movie and TV ratings, and you're done. Granted, if your kid is tenacious enough, they'll probably figure out the usually four-digit code eventually, and probably figure out how to change the code, and how to order pay-per-view without calling the cable company first, but still, it's accessible. A recent study from the Parents Television Council reports that primetime TV profanity has increased 69% since 2005. Getting back into nanny boxes proper, next up is arguably the most famous nanny box, the TV Guardian. These were first introduced back in 1998, and the concept was simple enough, a small set-top box that you would place between the output of, for example, a VCR and your TV. The box would then monitor the closed caption signal, as long as there was one available at least, then would introduce a signal to cut the audio and alter the closed captioning, assuming it was switched on via the TV Guardian. Also, during the early and mid-2000s, some electronics manufacturers built TV Guardian into their DVD players and even some of their final VHS decks. As of this episode, these built-in units, especially the DVD ones, are fairly plentiful in thrift stores across America. Oh, uh, by the way, the reason that manufacturers gave up on making and selling machines with TV Guardian pre-installed, according to their CEO, Rick Bray, was because manufacturers were looking to cut costs. Or maybe it was because the technology was just a bit unreliable. You'll be whistling symphony, do- Robin Williams fights him off and says, back off. And I thought, oh, my kids are not even 10 years old. Why do they have to hear this? And I, as a father, felt like such an for bringing that to their home. TV Guardian is easy to connect and even easier to use. Believe it or not, as of this episode, the TV Guardian train continues to roll. Counting the pre-installed technology, the system has gone through seven variations since its launch in 1998. Having said that, TV Guardian has had some serious problems in keeping up with newer technology. 
For example, in 2010, TV Guardian introduced a sorta HD compatible model. This particular model will carry an HDMI signal, but still needs an RCA video output to run from, apparently due to an inability to handle a digital closed captioning signal. Indeed, as of this episode, the TV Guardian has apparently reverted back to support only for RCA slash composite video, meaning no high def for you. By the way, TV Guardian still has yet to introduce anything to monitor graphic content. Now, I happen to have two nanny boxes in my possession, and one of them is this circa 2005 RCA brand DVD player with TV Guardian built in. And the other nanny box I've got is this thing, which is really just a cheap TV Guardian knockoff called Protect TV, which uh, this thing dates to roughly 2001, and um, it's just a plain old set-top box. So anyway, uh, these products do kind of have a common history of being unreliable, so uh, naturally I figured I'd do a little testing. And that's exactly what you're going to see here. So to run things down here, first up you'll take a look at the DVD player with TV Guardian in action, which you can adjust the settings, but it seems to become more and more pointless the more tolerant you let it be, so I didn't really even include anything from that. Uh, anyway, and sometimes, sometimes, operative word, it will replace words in the closed captioning with supposedly less offensive words, and sometimes to pretty hilarious result. And uh, then we'll take a look at the Protect TV, which has two settings, on and off. So basically, if it's plugged in, it's on, you know, and, and hooked up to the TV. The only way to have it off is just to have it not hooked up at all, because there's no power switch. So, isn't that lovely? Uh, and that thing will mute audio and it'll take the closed captioning and replace the bad words, which it's a little oversensitive on that front, but it'll replace the bad words with just X's. And uh, then to top things off, just for the heck of it, I figured, you know, I've got these two nanny boxes, you know, I might as well hook them together, run them simultaneously, just to see what happens. I'll never, ever be late again in my entire life. Is it a deal? Um, uh, Ginny, I was starting to worry about you. Those rice eaters back to the Great Wall of China and take the first place! Stream. Well, this is going to look a lot better. We have to match it to the stock footage of the octopus underwater. Yeah. Hey, throw me that whiskey. When you were slaves, you sang like birds. Hey, how is he anyway? He's dead. Died on impact. Jacob, moron. Jacob. Oh, uh, he's fine. Doing real good. Real busy and everything, but he promised to come over for Thanksgiving. Is he really going to run for... Good thing he's his mother's son. If he looked like you, he'd never get in the ballot. Eat my short.
best computer department in the country. Yeah, you're right. Adams is the best. Stand up and be proud. What? Don't be me. Hey, beautiful what? people. Take to a friendly place, that's all. This is the valley, Vincent. Marcellus ain't got no friendly places in the valley. But you'll see my fucking town. I'm calling my partner in Toluca Lake. Where's Toluca Lake? My partner's in 818. Jimmy, yo, how you doing, man? It's Jewel. Just listen up, man. Me and my homeboy in some serious fucking shit, man. We're in a car. We got to get off the road pronto. I need to use your garage for a couple hours. Did you hear about Eddie Hicks? I broke. Give me a cardiac. Angel Eddie was day. killed in a car crash. Head-on collision with freight truck. Cleared his car straight over the bridge into the Mississippi. Let's... Hey, how is he anyway? Moron Jacob. If I may, I'd like to get on my little soapbox for a minute here. Uh, in my opinion, there is just no substitute for good old-fashioned parenting. There. Hopefully that didn't take too long. Anyway, uh, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I relaunch the archive in an all-new, 100% inoffensive, politically correct, never-take-the-deity, or non-deity, uh, you know, for our atheist friends, in vain edition. And then I'll charge you right out the ass for the privilege.